lovely. Yeah. Oh, it's a pleasure to meet you. Yeah. Now, Wendy Bacon, what's your claim to fame? Well, I don't know whether I've got a claim to fame. Some would say infamy, but yeah. um, I've, uh, well, well, first of all, I'm a journalist. I'm very experienced journalism. Mm. And, you know, as well as that, like in this context, being here today in Tempe, I'm a mm. long term resident of the uh, inner city and yeah. inner Sydney and have, you know, always interested when there's events happening mm. and, you know, developments happening that can affect our lives. Yeah. So you're against West Connects? I certainly yeah. am against West Connects. Is it a bad idea, is it? Well, look, uh, for something that uh, touts itself as some sort of a solution to our traffic and transport crisis in Sydney, I think it's exactly the opposite. In fact, mm. it's going to create far more traffic chaos. Mm. It's going to increase dependency on the car, whereas mm. what we want is you know, a world-class uh, public transport solution for our city. And, and the sad thing is that you know, we're going back to 1950s ideas. You know, I was part mm. of the 1970s movement yeah. against uh, yeah. the freeway going through Glebe, you know, yeah, it was there yeah. on the day when we uh, occupied buildings there. Sure. And, you know, I really thought when that was stopped, you know, we would mm. move on to slightly more forward-looking thinking. But yeah. actually, this is going right back to that. Mm. And we've never really uh, moved away from it in Sydney. And yet at this time, you know, other cities, even, you know, United States cities that have been dependent on mm. the car, are really moving away from that. There's even freeways, you know, that are coming down. So Freeways that are coming down. Yeah, that's, are, that's incredible. Yeah, that's, yeah, Yes. So yeah. the other yeah. thing is, of course, it's, you know, what's lost mm. from it. You know, if, yeah. if it was a solution, well, mm. then you could say maybe a certain amount of disruption is justified. You know, if a, mm. if a really good rail system was coming through for parts of Sydney that didn't have it, yeah. you know, you could argue that a certain amount of disruption. But this isn't that. This mm. is actually tearing up communities, for example, St Peter's, but I've also been out to Beverly Hills, yeah. where there's a community li there living already very close to the M5, which they didn't mm. want in the beginning, yeah. and now they're being expected to have the motorway widen just mm. near where they are, and vegetation that they've grown themselves stripped yeah. away, you know, serious trees that have grown over 15 years. So if we were to add up all of the wetlands, the parks, the green mm. space, the trees that yeah. you think we'd be wanting to hold there at a yeah. time of you know, increasing threat from climate change, what we're doing is ripping them up. But we're not ripping them up for something that's going to work yeah. because all the evidence, and I think the other thing I would say is that, is that you can talk to ordinary people and they know this is not a good idea mm. and you can also talk to very serious experts, yeah. uh, planning experts, traffic experts, um, for example Michelle Zybots at the University of Technology Sydney who very yeah. publicly mm. says this is the wrong way to go. So mm. when we have so many experts telling us that this won't work, why are we going ahead with it? And the only reason I think we're going ahead with it is because our government, our democracy, as you could call it, has been captured by um, big development companies, toll road companies. They're the ones that are immediately benefiting yeah. out of this uh, with contracts. And so, yeah. you know, I think it's going to be very tough to stop it, but every little bit, every person who gets involved is going to help. But isn't, you know, a lot of people say, on, particularly on my group, which is Rockdale Residents United, uh, that um, surely it makes sense to provide um, four lanes instead of two lanes and that sort of thing. Like if the um, if the M5 was wider, then surely would would solve our problems, traffic problems. Why doesn't it solve our traffic problems? Well, the evidence is that the more motorways you build, I mean, if that argument was correct, yeah. the M5 wouldn't be the disaster it is now yeah. because, in fact, that's what we were told when they wanted to build the M5. And, in fact, the evidence is, and while I don't have exactly the figures, mm. the evidence is that if you build a motorway, it will induce traffic into it, and in particular with the M5. Mm. Um, you know, it, what's going to happen is eventually that traffic, if you're going to increase the cars coming into the inner city, eventually they're going to come out into the local streets and already around here or even trying to move across from inner Sydney over to the east over the weekend if you want to go to the beach or something, it's absolutely, it, takes, it takes about double what it should take and the public transport even in the areas of Sydney where we could say we've got good public transport is actually pretty lousy public transport and what really concerns me 
is that I'm told by a doctor out in Mount Druid that if you're a parent there, a single parent, maybe trying to get your children home, pick them up from school, get home, not a single parent, just a parent, it can take you a long time, maybe over an hour just to go a couple of suburbs. So what we need is local solutions. Mm. We need public transport. And you know, now I notice that you know the West Connects people and the uh, big government are saying, oh, we want both motorways and public transport. But we know that in fact, you know, there is a finite amount of resources. And if it's already it's up to 15 billion, it was started at 10, it's now up to 15 billion for the West Connects. How much of that could have been spent on good solutions, adding to public transport, and not tearing down all this, you know, vegetation and houses and a whole community in, in St Peter's is going to be destroyed. It's going to cost 15 billion, but there's also um, when people use it as a as a user okay. pays, and it's going to be uh, pretty expensive that way, isn't it? Well, what um, sort of tolls would we be looking at? I know on the um, at the M7, um, that's fairly expensive. At seven dollars one way, seven dollars coming out the other way. So you spent fourteen dollars on one trip out west uh, or northwest. Um, uh, would that be a fairly general thing, you think, for the West Connects? Absolutely. Well, yeah. already um, they had taken the tolls off the M4. Mm. Uh, once they, they're just about to begin, they say, the widening of the M4 that's adding to the lanes on either side, which is also taking houses and destroying uh, vegetation. But as soon as that happens, the toll will go back. And their own figures, West Connects' own figures, not, not my figures or, or Tim Williams at the the Committee of Sydney know their own figures show that there will be more traffic on Parramatta Road because people will avoid those tolls. Now once on their figures, once the whole system, if let's heaven forbid, but if it was to be built, if you want to go from say Borkham Hills to Mascot and back each day for work, that will cost you $200 a week. That's on their figures. Right. Now of course people won't People won't do that. And also, we're talking now um, into the 2000 and say 31 is the figures. All sorts of things could have happened in our world before then to make that something that isn't going to happen. So it probably was. If it was to go ahead, what would happen is the taxpayer will end up p picking up more and more of that. And they'll at the same, same time be trying to get people to pay tolls. And hopefully, you know, what will happen then is increasing demand for public transport, you know, even like at the moment on the trains in the morning, it's very difficult to get on the train. Yeah. Will the contractor have some sort of written guarantee that they won't lose money on it? Look, one of the things that happened with tollways is that if you look at the Lane Cove Tunnel, that company went broke because in fact the projections turned out to be wrong and the company went broke. Now, because of that, this new model, the West Connects model, actually does has the taxpayer, the public, carrying the risk and not the companies. So the companies aren't actually having to fork out money. They're just getting money. Yeah. And then the model will be built on people paying tolls after the 15 billion and plus what the public puts in, federal and state governments, then they'll count on the tolls. But if the tolls don't come, yes, there'll be a guarantee to pick up that cost. Now, I haven't seen the contract, but at the moment, the model is based on private companies not taking mm. the risk. Well, I believe there's another issue, and that's the lack of transparency in the process. Absolutely. I mean, What's happened there? Well, look, I think there's, there's, two, there's that secrecy anyway. Um, like we but more seen so that. in this case? or Well, uh, I, wouldn't, I think there's a huge amount that happens in our society that is secret. But yeah. certainly in this case, like we saw in Melbourne with the East West Link, that business case was uh, secret. And then when it was released, it turned out to be a disaster. Now, in this case, there has been pressure on them. Um, and the Auditor General found that there was you know, flaws, lack of transparency and flaws in the process. That was in late last last year they found that. So at the moment they have said they will release something in July. But it's also not just that, Bernie, because there is a secrecy, but there's also 
a density of some sorts of information. For example, if you can find the mm. URL on the web, there are reports, there is a process, there is a process where there's an environmental impact statement that'll be, you know, three or four hundred pages with attachments, and then you're invited, that's exhibited for a month and people can put in submissions. The word consultation is not used. What we're talking about here is feedback and information sessions, and then you can put it in and they have to summarise. And like, for example, for the M4 widening, I think it's 75% of the submissions were against, and no count. So I think gave it unqualified support. So negative, but then they, they summarise that and then they issue another very dense report. So for your average person, unless they've got groups such as your group or the No West Connects group, who can begin to synthesise this information, but that's certainly not what No West Connects do, no should. Um, all right, I well, just want to thank you, um, yeah. Wendy, for, for doing the, taking time to, uh, to talk to us. And, uh, it's a great pleasure to meet you. Thank you. Great, Bernie. Thanks.